morning dear friends and welcome to this module today we shall look at digital storytelling an emergent field in contemporary media and entertainment as we know storytelling began as an oral tradition where tales myths and histories were orally passed down through generations as collective racial and cultural repositories moving through the makeovers in print tv and silver screen there is now a transformative shift in the ways of storytelling with the advent of the digital age computers internet and the multimedia technologies expanded the possibilities of how stories could be told and experienced interactively and innovatively the term storytelling often brings to mind the image of an old storyteller following the tradition of old bards or homeric narrators enrapturing a live audience coleridge has imagined it so well in his famous poem the rhyme of the ancient mariner he holds him with his glittering eyes the waiting guests is to distill and listens like a 3 years child the mariner hath his way Sheila Bernard places engagement at the root of storytelling. A story, according to her, is the narrative or telling of an event or a series of events crafted in a way to interest the audience, whether they are readers, listeners, or viewers. Coleridge's famous passage buoyantly exhibits the magical effect of a skilled storyteller. One. who can mesmerize the congregation with wisdom values and courage like the old bards did in ancient times digital storytelling is a modern extension of this ancient art interwoven with digitized still moving images as well as sound the term digital storytelling was coined by dana atchley In the 1980s he had started using multimedia as a prop in his performances he used various digital tools some of them are listed here and devised a system that allowed him to tell stories using music video photographs and films in 1994 actually and joe lambert established the cds center for digital storytelling which is now known simply as story center actually and his wife denis had also founded the digital storytelling festival in 1995 which is continuing even now actually has remarkably suggested that digital storytelling combines the best of two worlds the new world of digitized video photography and art and the old world of telling stories new world is of digitized video photography and art and the old world is of telling stories this means that the old world of powerpoint slides filled with bullet point statements will be replaced by a new world of examples via stories accompanied by evocative images and sounds with the help of the new digital media practices so digital storytelling should be considered as a form of digital media production that allows everyday people to share experiences and stories it can also cover a range of digital narratives web based stories interactive stories hypertext and narrative computer games also it is sometimes used to refer to film making in general and of late it is being used to describe advertising and promotion efforts also by commercial as well as non-profit enterprises a digital storytelling is based on a narrative it can be fiction or non-fiction personal or general etc but it possesses compelling and emotionally engaging formats and also can be interactive with the help of newly evolving digital tools initially in 1993 Dana actually had used the definition of short narrated films like a short clip of about 2 to 5 minutes and it was later adapted and refined by Joe Lambert 
into a method of training promoted by the story center. Digital stories have been defined by Melissa Beck and Janice Neal as short vignettes that combine storytelling with still pictures, video clips, music, and text using a variety of video softwares. Storytelling in digital form found its early prominence in the work of Kane Burns. His 1990 documentary, The Civil War, is often regarded as one of the pioneering examples of this narrative genre. Burns had used first-person accounts to reveal several facets of the Civil War. He had combined archived photos, primary source documents, interviews and narration in order to create a compelling narrative that captured the essence of the American Civil War. The use of digital techniques such as panning and zooming on still images to create a sense of motion added to the storytelling experience. Later on, this technique came to be known as the Ken Burns effect. In the next slide, we have a brief video excerpt from Ken Burns' documentary, The Civil War. The Civil War was fought in 10,000 places, from Valverde, New Mexico, and Tullahoma, Tennessee, to St. Albans, Vermont, and Fernandina on the Florida coast. More than 3 million Americans fought in it, and over 600,000 men, 2% of the population, died in it. American homes became headquarters. American churches and schoolhouses sheltered the dying. And huge foraging armies swept across American farms and burned American towns. Americans slaughtered one another wholesale here in America, in their own cornfields and peach orchards, along familiar roads and by waters with old American names. In two days at Shiloh, on the banks of the Tennessee, more American men fell than in all previous American wars combined. At Cold Harbor, 7,000 Americans fell in 20 minutes. Men who had never strayed 20 miles from their own front doors now found themselves soldiers in great armies, fighting epic battles hundreds of miles from home. They knew they were making history, and it was the greatest adventure of their lives. The war made some rich, ruined others, and changed forever the lives of all who lived through it. This documentary is cited as one of the first models of this genre and became immensely popular, though it is sometimes criticized for its lack of coverage of slavery as a root cause of the war. Some other significant artists in this genre who should be named are Abedon, Brenda Laurel, and Pedro Mayer. Although digital storytelling encompasses various purposes, engaging a broad audience relying on a broader spectrum of content, it can also be understood or practiced as a focused personal narrative. If we look at the first three points in this slide, we find that critics and practitioners are referring to different time limits, so to say. Norman has suggested two to three minutes. When it is called a micro movie, it can also expand up to five minutes. And the suggestion is that the personal element should be emphasized and linkages to other people, happenings, places, etc. should also be presented with a personal touch. We can say that the digital stories may revolve around a single and well-defined idea, but at the same time, they can also leave different threads at different contours within the story so that they can be developed in different media formats later on. And that is why we find that the time limitations have also become redundant as the media and the formats of sharing a digital story online have also grown. We will look at this point further in later slides. The aim of digital storytelling is to convey a message through imagery, which a lot of times can be more effective than if it is just conveyed through sound. Let us have a look at a video 
it is a personal narrative created with the help of digital tools. For example, still pictures, short clips of videos, text, and narrator's own voice have been used in the depiction. Private property, contaminated. Caution, historic mine waste, health hazard. The signs appeared suddenly in my hometown. After more than a hundred years of mining history, they just showed up. No explanation, no context, as if they had sprouted from the ground. Having been absent for so long, such warnings carry no weight. Too little, too late. My life is permeated with gold and molded by human efforts to extract it. I understand this, and I am not threatened by it. The old tailings piles are mine. In the winter, we built huge snow jumps at the bottom and skied off them. Abandoned rusting trucks and pipes and machinery are mine. I discovered them with my friends. The old hydraulic ditches are mine, perfectly graded for my mountain bike. The old mine road leading to my blueberry patch is mine, and so are the jars of jam I made from the fruit. The swimming hole is mine, where the cold creek from the mountains merges with warm waters from the lake. I know it's mine because I wrote my name on it hundreds of times with a stick on red oxidized muddy banks where no plants grow. Gold has a way of drawing people in and history has a way of repeating itself. Chasing long forgotten riches, the new signs mark the rise of a new mine in old country. They say my home has proven values, high grade, high returns, low environmental impact. They call my trees overburden, my rocks ore, and my streams contaminated. The company answers questions I never asked. Who cares about high grades or high returns? Do the miners pick my blueberries when they are working beside the road? Do they put their feet in my creek? Are they making new tailings piles for skiing, new ditch lines for biking? Will they leave us new treasures in the bush? When the gold that defines this place is finally gone, what will remain? This video was made by Mika Jorgensen, who specializes in law and environmental history. It was made for a workshop in digital storytelling in 2018. We find that here, Mika Jorgensen becomes the voice of the rural people of the Bakerville gold mine area in British Columbia, Canada. She uses vivid descriptions and personal anecdotes to engage the audience and make them empathize with the narrator's perspective. The video also provides insights into some of the most important elements of digital storytelling that align with the observations of Joe Lambert, the founder of the Digital Storytelling Workshop. Lambert has suggested seven elements in terms of effective digital storytelling. The first point suggests that digital stories should be personal, expressing the writer's own experience and understanding. So a personal point of view or a personal touch is the first element Lambert has talked about. He also talks about the dramatic question which should be resolved by the end, keeping the audience engaged. With the further developments in digital modes of communication and media, we find that this issue is also being developed in different ways. For example, a particular question is resolved, but at the same time, it leaves threads which are developed later on in an independent manner. Certain examples would be discussed in the later slides. The digital storytelling should also evoke emotions and should also keep the construction manageable with a sharp focus. The pace of the story should also be adjusted, making tough decisions about what to include or omit during the revision of the script or the different versions during the process of editing. Lambert has used the phrase gift of narrator's voice. That means that using own voice to narrate the story 
adds a personal touch and is essential for effectiveness. Lambert has also suggested that adding music to the story enhances the narrative and he also cautions us about citing the sources and taking care of the legalities. Digital storytelling has evolved over the years from the simple narrated video to many forms that are more interactive in nature. These include websites, online videos, and even movies designed with various purposes in mind. For example, to convey important messages, to entertain, or to educate, or to engage the audience. One notable example in this context is scrolly telling. Scrolly telling is a digital storytelling technique that allows the audience to explore the story in a non-linear way by scrolling through the content. The term was first coined to describe online long-form stories characterized by audio, video and animation effects triggered by simply scrolling the page. It enriches the visual storyteller's repertoire through the harmonious union of scrolling and storytelling. This interactive treatment of digital content elevated information in a way that had not been achievable with the static PDF reports, which also proved to be a more accessible format than PowerPoint or keynote presentations. In this form of storytelling technique, with one part of the story is covered and the next part is revealed. And this creates a sense of anticipation and also engagement for the audience as they are encouraged to keep scrolling to discover what happens next. One of the first examples of this style to gain widespread attention was Snowfall, the avalanche at Tunnel Creek made in 2012. It was published by the New York Times. Scrolly telling leverages some aspects of cognitive psychology too, such as chunking or segmenting and the innate human desire for exploration, offering a structured and interactive format that enhances comprehension, retention and engagement through multimedia elements. We can cite the example of every last drop. Save Water Every Last Drop is an award-winning website created by Nice and Serious in partnership with Waterwise. This interactive site sensitizes us to stop the wastage of water. The New York Times had created a scrolly telling piece titled How the New Syria Took Shape in 2019 that exemplifies the power of the storytelling technique in conveying complex geopolitical events to a broad audience. Visual scrolly telling can easily engage readers with historical facts, enabling them to interact with a map as they scroll for a clear understanding. Through a combination of narrative elements, interactive maps and multimedia, this piece also shows the evolving landscape of digital journalism and storytelling coming closer. Scrolly telling thus goes beyond the traditional articles or reports. It transforms passive consumption of information into an active exploration of history navigating through visual maps. These varied aspects of digital storytelling reinforce ideas and appeal to different learning types in education also. By using digital storytelling, teachers can generate interest, attention and motivation among students of the digital generation in classrooms. Multimedia storytelling is effectively used as an educational tool. The educational goals for teachers are to generate interest, attention and motivation for the digital generation in their classrooms. The use of digital storytelling as a presentation tool also appeals to the diversity which exists in the learning styles of heterogeneous classrooms. It capitalizes on students' creative talents and allows their work to be published on the internet for others to view and critique. So, digital storytelling can be used by a class to explore local community institutions and 
local history as well. I would refer to a project which has been conducted in the Bengaluru district of Karnataka, India, in which students from seven government schools utilize digital storytelling to create narratives about their interactions with various local community institutions such as bank, primary health centers, libraries, post offices, etc. The project was participatory in nature with a team of students and teachers visiting these institutions and interacting with the employees. The different tasks that were involved in this project were asking questions, seeking clarifications, taking photographs, recording interviews in audio or video formats and ultimately creating a multimedia story. When students participate in these multiple steps of designing, creating and presenting their own digital stories, they also build on several literacy skills. While developing a script, the writing becomes better organized. Organization skills by managing the scope of the project within a time constraint also teaches them to finish the given task within the given time period. Research skills are also strengthened as they have to find and analyze and choose the information while preparing the final documentary. We find that these practices now are used internationally in the field of education as illustrated in the second point on this slide. Digital storytelling as an instructional strategy to help others in society has emerged now as a powerful tool. It promotes health advisories, say about AIDS, cancer, etc., and highlights concerns in partnership with marginalized communities. It is a type of critical narrative intervention that allows people to reflect on their experiences and connect with others, promoting health and addressing social inequality. Use of digital storytelling in the fields related with public health was an initiative of Amy Hill of the Story Center. Projects were developed with the Centers for Disease Control and the Open Society Foundations, which included work in gender-based violence prevention with groups in different cities in the USA. Additionally, certain other projects were taken up with the organization Snoke Gender Justice in South Africa and the widespread utilization of digital storytelling was also done with the network of foster youth. Kim Anderson and Jonathan Cook discussed the use of digital storytelling as a therapeutic tool for children who have experienced trauma. Their research suggests that sharing the personal experiences with the children teaches them resilience and encourages healing in a more productive manner. Digital storytelling is also used by several museums also at an international level. Museums use it in interpreting and making community history easily accessible. The largest project in this context, Culture Shock, was started in 2005. It is led by the Northeast Regional Museums Hub in partnership with Culture Unlimited. It has recorded over 550 different stories from people across the region and added their digital stories to the relevant museum collections. We find that similar initiatives have been taken up by the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. and also by the Colorado Historical Society. The Colorado Historical Society in 2007 collaborated with the Story Center to create a program, The Italians, to discuss the Italian-American history. The museums work with communities to use contemporary collected oral histories alongside those from archives to interpret the local history from a personal point of view. Finished digital stories also can have many uses. For example, advertising an upcoming exhibition, preserving a short-term project, building relations with communities, etc. They also provide skills to volunteers 
and can be permanently displayed in galleries. Another interesting and emerging area in this context is transmedia storytelling. It connects to different media platforms. Henry Jenkins, an American media scholar, had first coined this term in 2003. He had further expanded upon it in his writings and lectures. Transmedia storytelling is also known as a transmedia narrative or multi-platform storytelling. It is basically a technique of telling a single story or a story experience in a cohesive manner across multiple platforms and formats using the latest digital technologies. It represents a process where integral elements of a fiction get dispersed systematically for the purpose of creating a unified and coordinated entertainment experience. We may say that it goes beyond imitation or adaptation of a particular fiction as each new platform offers fresh insights to the story. Jenkins has mentioned seven fundamental principles of transmedia storytelling which can be seen in the image in the slide. These are spreadability versus reliability, continuity versus multiplicity, immersion versus extractability, world building, seriality, subjectivity and performance. In transmedia storytelling, each medium adds its distinct value to the development of the story. It assists in the telling of a story and also helps us in unveiling new aspects. Jenkins has described transmedia storytelling as a process where different elements of fiction are dispersed across multiple media platforms to serve the purpose of creating a coordinated entertainment experience. In today's world, we find that a good transmedia text does not simply supply information. Instead, it allows the fans or fandom to interact with the world within the text. As Carlos Scolari has suggested, semiotics and narratology are also ways to analyze transmedia storytelling. Semiotics is the science of science and a discipline concerned with sense production and interpretation process. Narratology looks at how structure and function factor into narrative with regards to its themes and symbols. Transmedia storytelling is a narrative structure that breaks through both language that is semiotics and media that is the narratology here. Often the same text may create different kinds of implicit consumers. A transmedia world is a point at which storytelling and technology intersect. It is the art of communication that constantly travels from one medium to another from online to offline and vice versa, engaging audience to co-create stories. An effective strategy of transmedia storytelling does not take a passive approach. Instead, engages with popular culture, making a story of its own and providing new context. One example that Jenkins has given is of the media conglomerate DC Comics. This organization releases comic books before the release of the related films, so the audience understands the backstory of a character. Much of transmedia storytelling focuses on larger complex worlds now, where multiple characters and plot lines can be sustained for a longer period of time. It also attracts larger and diverse groups of audience. So transmedia storytelling exists in the form of transmedia narratives, which Kelinov and Markova define as a multimedia product which communicates its narrative through a multitude of integrated media channels. In his book, You Are Gonna Need a Bigger Story, published in 2017, Houston Howard describes transmedia storytelling as the art of extending a story across multiple mediums and multiple platforms in a way that creates a better business model for creators and a better experience for the audience.
So now we find that ultimately digital storytelling also has to find its practical side and that is the business. Simon Pont in his 2013 work, Digital State, How the Internet is Changing Everything, has also presented this aspect in detail. Pond cites Ridley Scott's alien prequel Prometheus, released in 2012, and the three viral films produced by 20th Century Fox as part of the advanced global marketing campaign, which is also a vivid executional example of transmedia storytelling theory. For example, DC Comics release coloring books to attract younger audience and they may also leave gaps in the plot lines or character development to begin another extension of transmedia storytelling such as fan fiction. Robert Breton has identified three types of transmedia story, franchisee, portmanchu and complex to describe the relationship between and across the media. The first describes a story world that is conveyed in multiple stories using multiple media. The second describes a single story that consists of multiple media and the third is a combination of these two. Focusing on franchisee, Jung has described a transmedia franchisee taxonomy that focuses on individual text and their narrative based temporal relation to other text within the franchisee, prequels, sequels, interquels, midquels, etc. To elaborate further on the point made by Robert Breton, we can illustrate the idea of franchisee transmedia storytelling by referring to the Matrix series, which involves not only the movies but also the comic books, video games, animated series all contributing to the overarching narrative. As an example of Port Manchu transmedia storytelling, we can cite the Marvel Cinematic Universe where characters from various comic book storylines are brought together in a cohesive narrative across movies, TV shows and other mediums. Complex transmedia storytelling can be seen in projects like Ingress and the Lizzie Bannett Diaries where the story unfolds across multiple platforms inviting audience interaction. Among several widely renowned examples of transmedia storytelling, let us look closely at the famous Harry Potter saga and its journey to become a transmedia storytelling franchisee. The first point on the slide is a reiteration to underscore the significance of Jenkins' idea. A good transmedia text does not simply supply information. Instead, it allows the fans or fandom to interact with the world within the text. Harry Potter is perhaps the best illustration. Initially a young adult book series, Harry Potter has evolved into a transmedia phenomenon that spans multiple forms of media. It began as a literature for children in 1997 followed by the first Harry Potter movie, released in 2001, but it matured alongside its audience, expanding into movies that closely followed the books. Beyond this, it embraced transmedia storytelling using various media to enhance the story rather than duplicating it. Rowling created a detailed wizarding world by setting this story in a real life location and by creating texts within the story, which she would later publish as books of their own, such as Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Movies, fan clubs, comics, ceremonies, etc. are also available to us. So we find that in an interactive manner, the story has moved across multiple platforms. So we have fan fiction, such as fan-made videos, social media fan groups, Harry Potter merchandise, Harry Potter World at Universal Story, at Universal Studios in Florida, in Pottermore, an official Harry Potter website which was created by J.K. Rowling herself. It was started in April 2012 as a joint venture by Rowling and Sony, 
and this was a website where fans could create their own account and could explore this story in a deeper manner. This website has recently been closed in 2019 and has been replaced by wizardingworld.com which has combined Harry Potter with Fantastic Beasts, the prequel to the Harry Potter franchise. Jenskins had suggested that the most useful tool in transmedia storytelling is creating an area where fans can expand and immerse themselves into this story. Harry Potter has done it effectively. Transmedia storytelling as we see is influenced by the economics of media consolidation, a concept known as synergy. In today's media landscape, we find that companies are horizontally integrated, which means that they have interest across various formally separate media sectors. Large media conglomerates are motivated to extend their brand and franchises across numerous media platforms. For instance, DC Comics owned by Warner Brothers is the studio behind films like Batman Begins and Superman Returns. It also published comic books ahead of these movies. These comics provided additional backstory enriching the film experience and also served as a promotional tool to generate excitement for the upcoming films. And this blurs the line between marketing and entertainment in today's digital media world. A frequent trend which we witness in the field of transmedia narratives is that it does not perhaps revolve around a single character or an isolated storyline. Rather, it prefers to center on an intricate fictional universe which is capable of supporting numerous interconnected characters and their narratives. We can of course cite the example of the Matrix and the Hunger Games etc. The act of constructing these expensive worlds sparks a desire in readers to delve into every aspect of the universe which continually keeps on extending just outside the complete understanding and reach of the audience. This experience in itself offers a distinct form of enjoyment to them. The idea of a neat ending of this story does not exist anymore in the conventional sense. So we can say that the conventional idea of a neat ending or a clear convincing conclusion of this story does not exist anymore. The extensions of this transmedia story also serve a variety of functions. It refers to the additional content or materials that may expand upon or complement a primary narrative typically across different media platforms. Let us now look at certain examples. The BBC had used radio dramas to maintain audience interest in Doctor Who for almost a decade during which no new television episode was produced. The extension may also provide insight into the characters and their movements. For example, websites surrounding Dawson's Creek and Veronica Mars reproduced the imaginary correspondence or journals of their feature characters. These extensions also expand newer aspects of the fictional world. As in the web version of the Daily Planet, which was published each week by DC Comics during the run of its 52 series to report on the events occurring across its superhero universe. Extension can also bridge between events depicted in a series of sequels and it can also enhance the overall sense of realism in the fiction. Digital storytelling thus has revolutionized narrative expression through multimedia and interactivity in the digital age. Transmedia storytelling expands narratives across multiple platforms and mediums, enriching the overall storytelling experience and enriching audience exploration of interactive possibilities of fictional and real worlds. In today's interconnected world, digital and transmedia storytelling are essential tools for conveying messages, entertaining, educating and connecting with audience. 
it also has the potential for further evolution and innovation in the future. In the next module, we will expand further on this discussion by looking at some interactive films and games. Thank you.